I would like to say I don't ich spreche nicht gut Deutsch. <laughs> so I will be speaking uh, English. I'm sorry for that. It's the difference from my pre the previous speakers, but I think everybody speaks English here, right? Sure. You're right. Awesome. So uh, my name is Marek. Uh, I work in Red Hat on the OpenShift team. I'm past advocate. That means that I try to explain what platform as a service really is and what are the benefits of this concept and what we, what the concept can deliver. I am not here to sell something to you. I would like to make you interested in platform as a service. If the platform as a service will be OpenShift by Red Hat, I will be happy. If it will be just a concept with some other provider, that's also very good. So, does it work? No. This works. Okay, so, uh, who is familiar with what the concept platform as a service? You're right. Uh, I will be asking these questions because I don't like monologues. I like to have conversation, so I will try to get you into the presentation too. So, Platform as a Service, as most of you know, is a way how to deploy web applications. I like this picture because it's three uh, pictograms that depict the whole concept. First, you have a developer that wants to deploy his code, and, this, and he wants a running application, and this developer does not want to really touch the servers. He only wants to get the code somewhere and get the application running. And this is what Platform as a Service is. You push the code somewhere, the application, and you get it running, and you do not care about the deployment options, you don't care about the servers, you don't care about the configurations. From the other point of view of the operations guys, you have developers to have ability to deploy applications without bothering you. Who is from the infrastructure teams here? Operations guys? Yeah, so you know that it's always pain when the developers come and they want something and it takes you time and you know, these, all these things. So from this point of view, Platform as a Service is a great concept that you provide the developers with automated way to create environments for deploying the applications. They can, do de they can deploy the applications, but not, not anything else. And in return, you can monitor, you can see what they are doing, but in a controlled, really monitored way. Let's move. Mm -mm. I'll be clicking in here. So the second, the other point of view is that you as a developers, you really need to innovate. You really need to move forward. The business guys, the managers want you to do things. They want you to deliver the products more and more faster. And you really need to do things fast. And you don't want to take and uh, you don't want to wait for the operations guy to provide the virtual machine. And you don't want to wait for somebody to do something for you. You really want to be in control. You really want to move and you really want to finish your task as, as fast as possible. So, Platform as a Service is something that can help you to do these things. For the developers, they can deploy applications without Thank you very much. Uh, you can, they can de deploy applications without being uh, forced to wait for somebody to do that for them. For the operations, it provides a way to uh, provide an environment for developers to deploy the applications and don't have, they don't have to care about what developers are already doing. And for the managers, it provides a way for providing an environment for the developers and operations to deploy and develop the, pro the products more faster. So OpenShift is the platform as a service, and it is by Red Hat. Click, please. Uh, we have three different versions, different products. Uh, I will start with the OpenShift Online, which was the first one. It's a service that we provide in the public cloud. We are running on Amazon EC2. And if you go there, just openshift.com, you can sign up. You can get three applications for free. Each of those can, you, can has a gig of memory, a gig of space on the disk and you can deploy three applications in the public cloud just so. If you like it, you can move to the commercial version. If you don't like it, you don't have to. So this is how we started, but we are Red Hat and we like open source. So we took this service and we open sourced the whole project that is OpenShift Origin. This happened a bit, a bit like one year ago. And this is Apache to license a project like on GitHub. You can take it, you can pull request, you can develop your own version, you can deploy your own version, it's up to you. And we also took the code 
and provide a product that we support. This is called OpenShift uh, Enterprise. And this one is run on premise by the enterprises when they need to be on control of the, of the dev deployment. And we also then take the enterprise and run it as online. So online is a deployment of the enterprise version of OpenShift. So you have two ways how to deploy OpenShift. Either you can go online or you can go with the enterprise. In the online version, you get everything, almost everything as a service, and you as a client, you only uh, push the code and you get the application deployed. In the other way, you need to have your IT operations, you need to have somebody who deploys the OpenShift for you, and then you provide the service that we provide in the public cloud as a service internally in your company or in the community where it is needed. So, I would like to be deep dive inside OpenShift and show you how it really works inside, what is the base, what it's OpenShift built of. At the, at the to total bottom, there is some infrastructure. We are agnostic to that. OpenShift does not care how you provide him a virtual machine. He only wants you to do and deploy a virtual machine somehow, or bare metal, it's up to you. And this machine should be Red Hat Enterprise Linux for the enterprise version or Fedora for the community version. And on top of that, we built the cluster of OpenShift, of the deployment. Uh, these small, small boxes, these are the small environments inside the operating system, which we secure using SE Linux. This is a project that is developed in cooperation with the American NSA, which is not, not a good name right now in Europe. <laughs> But still, they really like the security and we can trust that the, this system is proved and it solves a, bit, uh, a lot of uh, different problems with the security. So we use SE Linux as a way to isolate applications inside an operating system so we can deploy multiple operating, uh, multiple, oper, oh, sorry, multiple applications into uh, one operating system. And we use C groups, that is part of the Linux kernel, to provide a resource isolation, so you can say this application can use this amount of memory, this amount of CPU, and this amount of I/O operations. Yes. So in the end, you end up with a node which is Red Hat Enterprise Linux or Fedora or the community version. And in this one operating system, you can run several uh, different applications which are isolated into smaller environments, and they cannot interfere with each other. So in the end, you get much higher density of applications of the deployments than you get with the simple virtualization. Because you can uh, make higher density with virtualization than bare metal and higher density on top of virtualization with platform as a service. So uh, in the real world deployments, you really need to have three, at least three different uh, versions of the application. Usually you have QA, Usually you have a development and usually you have a production system, right? So there are three, two ways how to do that. First way is you have one platform as a service and you have different nodes that provide a different version of, of the applications and you move the applications from one uh, node to the other inside one of the deployment of OpenShift. Or, please, or you get uh, three different deployments of OpenShift and you know that each of these platforms is, has different SLAs, different KPIs, and you just move the application in the, in, the, in the life cycle from one to the other, and it can accommodate the needs of this application, of the environment, actually. So, why, why, would like to, why, why should IU be interested in OpenShift? It's strength, because it's built on proven technologies. We didn't invent something new. We just took something that is in kernel, that is in Linux, and we built automation on top of that. And we try to use community projects, we try to not invent new things, just to leverage things that have been here for, for years and make it automated, make a good environment that is proven. Freedom, no, 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 thank you. <laughs> Freedom is the second thing. Uh, the, whole, uh, the whole platform is open source, so there is no locking for you. You can run the platform yourself on your own hardware. You can run it in a public cloud. It, we do not have any proprietary APIs. We provide you with uh, Java, Ruby, PHP, Python, whatever language you can think of. And this has just a direct access to MySQL, PostgreSQL, MongoDB, 
and the databases. So there are not, no proprietary layers in the, in the platform. You just use the same system as you would use in the simple deployment on your own hardware. We just help you to automate the deployment for the developers or for the operations. Openness, no lock-in, and I have been talking about it already. As a, as, a, as a user, you can use OpenShift in four ways. Uh, actually, three ways, because all those three are based on the fourth one. We have a REST API that you can access and you can use it for maintaining, for operating the platform. And we have three client tools. We have command line tooling that is uh, written in Ruby and you can install it and use for, ma to man for managing OpenShift. Uh, you can use the web console, which is also open source. And you, or you can use Eclipse. We have a plugin for Eclipse ADI. So whenever you want, if you are a Java developer and you use Eclipse, you just install a plugin and you can mo maintain or operate the whole platform for your favorite IDE. So now I am moving a bit farther from OpenShift and uh, this is something that uh, Red Hat is really interested in. And can you move one, two more slides? Oh, one, this way. one more. Thank you. That's the whole picture I want to speak about because we don't have much time. So I just move it uh, straight to here. Uh, so Red Hat is interested in building a so-called open hybrid cloud. We want to be to have the whole uh, platform, the whole, the all the codes, everything should be open and open source, and you should be able to switch and match and don't lock yourself in some product in some deployment. We want to be hybrid. We want to leverage the power of the public cloud where you get the resources as a service with the uh, power of the, your own data centers where you have the security restrictions that you really need. And sometimes it's possible that it might be worth for you to scale the application in the public cloud and connect back to the data center where, you, where are your data. So you can scale the application, get the resources from the, from the provider and keep the data secure in your own data center I am actually aware of one deployment in this way. So this is something that Red Hat really wants to, to provide our customers, is the way to not be locked in public or private cloud, to be locked in OpenStack or OpenShift. We want you to be able to move from the one thing to the other and provide complete openness in the cloud way. So OpenShift Plus as a Service uh, is bridging two worlds. We do provide support for Java EE, for JBoss, uh, we are building on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. We are building on things that are proven, that are here for years and you are used to that. We also want to leverage the new things, uh, the agile things like Ruby, Python, and the languages that are nice to have, but are not so trusted by the enterprises. So OpenShift tries to bridge these two worlds and provide a way to also use the technologies that are in enterprise uh, favorite by enterprises, but also those that are favorited by the developers and by the users. Thank you very much. That was my presentation. I hope I made you interested, and if you have any questions, please. No questions? Really? Oh, over there. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, besides of uh, uh, OpenShift, there are several other platform as a service uh, initiatives at the moment, and it seems to me that uh, there is uh, like a bit of uh, war going on. What will be the, the platform of choice? Could you um, tell us from, from your side what do you think uh, the environment will develop and? Uh, especially looking at standardization that uh, it, yeah, yeah you can exchange when you for example you you deploy your application on uh, azure cloud for example and you want to to move it later to openshift or to uh, google app engine what that environment in your opinion will look like in two three years that's an inter interesting question if i would knew that i would definitely invest in one of the companies right uh, so, uh, you mentioned Azure. Uh, I don't really want to compare two different products and companies, 
but Azure, as far as I know, is only in the public cloud. It's very difficult to deploy it on the on, uh, on premise for you. So this is one differentiator. You really, I think, it's good to have the option to move to the private cloud in case you either grow out of the public cloud or you get the data that are sh not supposed to be in the public cloud. Uh, there are so there is then there are several products that are that provide these two functions. Then it's totally up to you to evaluate what really suits your needs. Uh, I think uh, OpenShift provides the best uh, security options that are available right now in this uh, in this area, and also we provide the best range of technology that are supported by the platform. So and we build on Red Hat Enterprise Linux that is really trusted by. Uh, governments all around the world in the United States, in Europe, uh, by secret, by the spooks, by everyone. So uh, I think that OpenShift leverages the best things that have been here and it has a bright future in, in, in you know. <laughs> it's difficult to say what will be the next thing. It's up to the developers what they will prefer and what they would like, or the enterprises if they would like to go with uh, the platform or the other, or something like that. Does it answer your question? Uh, I don't think so, yeah, but it's a difficult question. <laughs> yeah, we can talk afterwards, yeah. That's for a long conversation. Yes. Uh, so, a quick question. When I, as a, as a user, deploy, for example, a web application, do I have to take care of the uh, resources? So if uh, I, my web ap application is a huge success, is that automatically then scaled up by uh, OpenShift, or do I have to take care about that? You don't have to. Uh, we do provide automatic scaling based on the load coming to the application. So you can say this is the minimum level of uh, gears, what we call the environments with the applications, and the maximum gears I can afford to have and we will scale up and scale down uh, the gears based on the load coming to your application. Uh, so you, you as a user, you don't have to t take care about that yourself, or you can. Uh, you can have a manual scaling and you can say, I want to scale up, scale down, based on your own needs, based on your measurements. It depends on the use case, but we try to provide both ways, the automated <laughs> one and the manual one. Okay, no hands. Thank you very much.